Please lift up your hands with me. Lift up your hands with me and wave it to Jesus. Thank him. Say to him, thank you, Jesus. Say it with me again. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, we thank you. We appreciate your presence in our lives. We thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Please take your seats. GTC Music, thank you. Let's enjoy the presence of God this morning. Oh, God. Oh, let the rain of your presence fall on me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Absolutely nothing without you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Get your face prepared. Get your face prepared, please. Your worship offering. The project offering. Ha 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 ha. Bada ludi iste de becom badan talam badoste de becom badante. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have your offerings ready? Please lift it to Jesus. And wave it to Jesus. Wave it to Jesus. And say with me, thank you, Jesus. Say it again, thank you, Jesus. Cast your offerings now. And take note that this evening at 6 p.m., we are back here. It's the third Sunday, so we have healing waves. Come with afflicted in the body and the soul. And the power of the Lord. The Lord Jesus himself, as we fellowship with him, we will see him bring about mighty signs and wonders in our midst. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So, we've been looking at the ministry of the Spirit. And please hear me and hear me well this morning. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. This Romans chapter 8, verse 10. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 10. It says, and if Christ is in you, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. And we are, we're saying that it's important for us to understand why we are taking time to break down the significance of this piece of scripture. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of the work of righteousness. Every human is a three in one being. Every woman, a human, sorry, has a body, has a soul, and a spirit. Spirit, soul, body. That's the makeup of every human being. But here, Paul took the liberty to try to clarify something for us. And he said, if Christ is in you, if really Christ is in you, then there is something that had happened to your being as a human. There is something that has happened to you your body is, of course, dead. And we've taken time to go through that. If you listen to the past messages. Your body is, of course, dead. Because of sin or the work of sin. Which is primarily the disobedience of Adam. As God told him, don't eat this fruit because the day you eat of it, you will die. So because of that, when Christ is in you, your body is dead. Your body inherited from the lineage of Adam is dead. But there is something significant that had happened to you. There is something significant that had happened to you. Your spirit is now life. Your spirit is now life. Your spirit is now what? Life. Because of the work of righteousness, which Jesus did. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 
it says, For he made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's the work of righteousness. The work of righteousness is that he made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin, so that we can become the righteousness of God in him. And essentially, becoming the righteousness of God in him is having his kind of life. And God is a spirit. And his kind of spirit is life.
said, for as the father has life in himself, so has he granted the son to have life in himself. We're reading about the son. Jesus, in the beginning, the word was with him, and in him is life. And he says that the son was God in the class of God. But in him is life. And he's saying that the father also has life. So the basis of working in the class of God or being in the class of God is what? Life. The father has life. The son has life. So if Christ is in you, and we are saying that, our scripture is saying that you have life. Can you comprehend what it means? It means that you, an ordinary being, had been lifted from ordinariness and brought into the class of God. Stop playing religion. We need to stop playing religion. We are, if Christ is in you, if Christ is not in you, fine. I mean, that's okay. You see, if Christ is not in you, that's okay. It's okay to be religious if Christ is not in you. It's okay. In fact, it's the greatest thing you can ever do. If Christ is not in you, the greatest thing you can ever do is to be religious and have a, a deity, or in this case, God to worship. But if Christ is in you, something fundamental has changed concerning your life. You cease to be an ordinary human being. You've been brought into the class of God. Jesus was, it was said about Jesus here in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. He says, whose mind the gods of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the gospel of the glory of what? Christ. We can break that down first. There's a gospel. There's a gospel. There's a good news. That good news is about the glory of Christ. The glory of Christ. What is the glory of Christ? <laughs> Paul was saying in Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of what? Glory. There's a glory that is of Christ, which comes by Christ being in you. It is his glory, so he defines it. What is the scripture saying here? Who is what? The image of God. Who is the image of God? Jesus Christ is the image of God. He is the very image of God. That is why he says that he is God. And we also acknowledge that he is God. Why? He had life. He had life. He walked on this earth as one that had life. And if Christ is in you, then you also 
are a possessor of life. The fire of God this morning will deal with that brainwashing of your mind. That makes you see yourself as a mediocre. Even when you hear what Jesus came to do for you, you still see yourself as that ordinary being that had come from a particular lineage and that is saddled by the past and the things of that lineage. That is why you don't have to miss the May fast. The seven nights of wonders in May is one that we want to stand in the place of prayer. And whatever he will let us do to enforce what he is saying we are. Are you following me? To enforce it. He <laughs> said, a great door and effectual have been opened unto you, but there are many adversaries. When the door is opened, there are adversaries preventing you from accessing the door. You need to stand in the light of what you have received to shake off the adversaries. So you might have life, but it appears like your life is driven by <laughs> death, sin. You stand in the place of what you know you are and battle it in prayer. That's why I say you, I mean, when I'm spending time praying, I'm not praying for uh, a new car to drive or houses to build. Or business break. No, 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 no. There is something that Jesus came to do for you and I. If we can only walk in it, everything that he says the world is chasing after will be added unto us. That's what it means, though. You are chasing after business breakthrough. You are chasing after financial breakthrough. You are chasing after career breakthrough. If you can only chase after what he came to do for you, all those things will align. Will you see Jesus walking here chasing after business breakthrough? Why? Because in him was life. And he came and walked as the representation of life, the image of God. And whatever needed to happen for him to progress was happening. That's why he says all things work together for good for those who are called and called according to his purpose. <laughs> if you can only get that, if you can only get that and pursue the fact that if Christ is in you, you have now been brought into the very class of God. <laughs> Jesus is the image of God. <laughs> Colossians One fifteen, he says he is the image of the what invisible God. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of the invisible God. What did he say? John chapter ten, verse thirty.
He said what? I and my father are what? One. He said, as the father has life, he has given me to also have life. So that's why he can say, I and my father are one. Father has life. I also have life. We are one. We are one. We participate in the dimension of life. We are one. I and my father are one. And here what happened. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Verse 33. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we do not stone you. But for blasphemy. And what is that blasphemy they were thinking of? He was saying. And because you, being a man, make yourself what? God. But a man is a possessor of life. If it's in him is life, then he is God. Are you following me? If in him is life, then he is God. So he was saying that I and my father are one. They said, ah, no, who we'll stone you? He said, oh, I have been doing good works. And you know why he said, he said that? Because God is good. God does good works. Are you following me? God does good works. He is good. In Luke 18, verse 18 downwards, there was someone that came to Jesus and then addressed him as good teacher. And Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's only one that is good, God. The life of good is in the nature of God. So if you have God's nature, you will do God's kind of work. It's good works. Are you following me? Are you following me? If you have God's nature, you do God's kind of work, good works. So when, maybe let's go there. Luke 18, 18. Jesus. <laughs> we'll come back to John 10. He said, now a certain ruler asked him, saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. So Jesus was bringing the attention to the fact that if you are calling me good, then you acknowledge that I and my father are one. Are you following me? Then you acknowledge that I and my father are what? One. I do good works. Because he is the only one that is good. Can I help us all and Lord and bring this in Ephesians 2, 10. What did Paul say here? He said, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. We are his own workmanship. We are products of him. He created us in Christ Jesus. That is Christ in you. For what? For what? Good works. Good works. Which God had prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So you see, you can't be a possessor of life and be thinking low of yourself. 
A possessor of life is one that had been brought into the class of God. And you need to be able to produce the lifestyle. Make things happen according to that uh, 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 nature. That is what we call good works. Are you following me? Yes. Can I tie one more in? Oh, okay. Matthew chapter 5. Remember John chapter 1, verse 4? In him is what? In him is what? Life. And the life was what? Okay. What did he say in Matthew chapter 5? Then you understand what light is about. <laughs> you understand what light is about. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are hot. You are hot. The world is patiently waiting for people. And these people are patiently also waiting to go to heaven. Not understanding what they've been made. But patiently waiting. They want to enjoy things and pursue things as the world pursues it. In the name of the Lord. With the hope that one day, one day, they will leave this earth and go to heaven. But he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. What did he say here? I hope you can see the screen. One to go. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your heart. <laughs> In him was life. Life is light. We are seeing here light is what? Good works. The shining of your light is the producing of good works. That is why Isaiah 6 says that Gentiles will come to the brightness of your light, the shining of your light. When you're producing the good works of life, when you're producing the good works of life, they will come. They will bring their treasures. It will be added unto you. You will not pursue them. So we need to understand what it means for Christ to be in you. That is why we are taking time to look at it and look at it well. What does it mean for Christ to be in you? For you to have a spirit which is now life. What it means is that if you have Christ in you, then you've been privileged to be lifted up and be brought into the class of God. You have the very nature of God. You have the very existence of God. Ah. You have the very existence of God. <laughs> Whatever God is and has, you have. You have that nature. 
You have what? Are you, are you hearing me? You have what? You have that nature. You have the very nature of God. Is that not what John 3.16 is about? Is that not what John 3.16 is about? Lord, okay. <laughs> Let's just look at John 3.16. And then we can continue. Okay, maybe I don't even have to go there. You can all recite it, Baba. <laughs> because you have chewed it, Baba. <laughs> chew, chew, chew and pour. This is why you don't forget. <laughs> you know, we say chew and pour, pass and forget. Is that not it? When you pass, you forget. But because you've not passed, you don't forget. <laughs> He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, that they should not die, but have what? Have what? Everlasting life. What is everlasting life? You can say eternal life. What is eternal life? It is the God kind of life. Zoe. That you will have the God kind of life. So he, he was saying everlasting life to qualify the kind of life he's talking about. God exists in the everlasting place. God's existence is eternal, it's everlasting. So he was using that to qualify the life properly so that you cannot think it is high life or low life or hip life. <laughs> God had made it possible for you to have his kind of Life. And that is what it means if Christ is in you. If Christ is in you, you have received the very nature of God. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. He says... Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Oh God. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that you can ever find in heavenly places in the domain of God. Every empowerment, every existence, every nature, everything you can ever find in the existence of God, in Christ you have been given. That's what he's saying. What he means is that he has brought you into his likeness, into his image and likeness. You have become a true reflection of God. If Christ is in you, you have the very nature of God. Let's go back to John 10. Ah, oh, Father, thank you. So he says they wanted to stone him because being a man, he make himself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. So Jesus was trying to Bring them some understanding to say that 
When you open your law, your scriptures, don't you see God himself calling a class of people God? <laughs> you, you get what I mean? Don't you see? He was saying that. Don't you see in your scripture? Verse 35. He said, if he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So he was saying that your law, your scripture is true. It's, it's, it's right. So if God is calling some people God, and these people are the people that the word of God came to them. <laughs> you can take journey in scriptures to see people like that. One very conspicuous one is Moses. Moses, God told him, I've made you a God unto what? Pharaoh. And Aaron, your, your brother, your senior brother will be your prophet. Why? What happened? He had an encounter with God. The expression of God appeared to him like a fire burning a bush. And it wasn't burning. By that encounter, he received a status that brought him into a God realm. So Jesus was saying, even if these people that the expression of God appeared to and made them God, and your scripture documents it. It's in Psalm 82, if you care to check. Your scripture documents it. Then he went on. Verse 36. Do you say of him, do you say of him, who the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? So he's saying that even if those people that the word appeared to, they had the expression of God come to them. God referred to them as God, and your scripture documents it. And that one, you don't have any trouble with it. How much more the one that he has sanctified? In essence, we'll talk about that one day. But in essence, what it means is that the one he had granted life. The one he had granted to have his very nature. Life. You know, he was saying in John chapter 17, he said, for their sake I sanctified myself that they also might be sanctified. So sanctify them, make them one as we are one. Make them one as we are one. Bring them into our class. When you bring them into our class, then the world will know that indeed you sent me. So, the reason why Jesus Christ came is to make it possible for you and I to function in the class of God. To have the nature of God and produce his kind of works. That is why he's saying here that if Christ is in you, your body is dead, true, but your spirit is now God-like. It has the God nature. Your spirit is now the exact kind of spirit that God has. And he's saying that so that you can pay attention to who you are. That is why we are looking at it. So you can pay attention to who you are. <laughs> we are People that had been brought to fellowship with him. Sorry. First John. Let me see if I can land it here. This is this fire that you are catching this morning. 
will be with you forever in the name of Jesus Christ. And you start rearranging how you see yourself and the journeys you undertake as a Christian to reflect that. What will make me stay awake at night? Or what will make me push? It's because of these things that I am privileged to have been seen or had been shown. And he continually opens it to me. Because if I have a God kind of life, which is my spirit, then I need to know how to pay attention to make sure that that can gain some relevance in my life. That can gain some relevance what? In my life. So, if I spend time praying, if I spend time fasting, I'm not fasting and praying because I need career breakthrough. Or I need to make sure that I have children that are, uh, look proper in the eyes of people. All those things are byproducts of one pursuit. If I can only pursue his life, seek after his life, all those things will align. I don't have trouble at all. All will align. It will align. It will align. It will align. It will align. I was saying here that I had a discussion with my children before they started SHS-1 that they were riding off deck. They were all against it. I told them, they were all against it. No, 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 daddy, no. I left the matter. I said, okay, let's leave it, whatever it is. Then my daughter calls me just some few weeks ago and said, Daddy, I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw myself doing this, that, that, that. And then I understood what it means. Daddy, I'm ready to ride on deck. It wasn't my prayer topical. God, these children, they are trying to, oh, Lord. No, no, no. I am pursuing life. I keep eating, pursuing life. My environment will carry the order of life. Things will be ordered, organized accordingly. Then the boy also called me. After hearing the sister able to call me, he said, Daddy, I'll write to I write, like he wants to fight with me. I will write. I say, he say, I will write. Register me. I will write. I say, I, I cry. I, say, I just smile. I say, okay. Look, we have been brought into a place. Can we pay attention to that? That is why Jesus, when he was say, talking about the parable of the sower, warned that be careful. Because the cares of this world and the deceit of riches can choke you from the message of the kingdom. You can center your pursuit after the cares of this world and the deceit of the, uh, with the kingdom, with the kingdom message, and twist it. In the name of pursuing comfort, or 
trying to show that you too, you can be like the world and, and be much better. But he had given you something that they don't have. They have knowledge of good and evil. That's their spirit. You have been privileged to have life. Can you focus on life? Do you know what is in life? Let me just open something small and trust God that I come back to John chapter 1 before we close. First John chapter 1, sorry. Let me open something. You remember last week and two weeks ago, we talked about what the woman saw in the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. He says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one what? To make one what? Wise. There is a wisdom that that spirit carries. And that wisdom is what the human has been trading with all this while. See what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3. <laughs> he says, to me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach, the gen uh, to, uh, I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9. And to make all see what is the fellowship of this mystery. That's what we are going to in 1 John 1. What is the fellowship of this mystery? Which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God. So this thing that he's coming to talk about, from the beginning, God had hidden it in him. What it means is that this thing that he's coming to talk about, no one that had ever walked with God has seen it that before. Listen carefully. He lied hidden in God. It was hidden in him from the beginning. He hid it. He hid it for a dispensation like that which you and I have been privileged to come onto. He hid it. So if you talk about Abraham and you shake, hey father Abraham. Abraham didn't see it. You talk about Isaac, hey you talk about Joseph, hey, hey, Moses cried, hey, Elijah, ah. He's saying that it was hidden in God. He said, hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the intent, the intention that now, somebody say now. Somebody say now. So it was hidden until now. The advent of Jesus, it was opened up. And what is it? That the manifold wisdom of God, the many-sided wisdom of God, might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. There's a wisdom of life. There's a wisdom of life that the earth don't have idea about. That wisdom had been hidden until now. That if you and I can just allow and accept this thing and work at this, this earth will experience a kind of wisdom they've not seen before. Knowledge of good and evil, her ability to make one wise. Life also have what it takes to make one wise. And that wisdom is according to the very wisdom of God. Remember I was saying to you, Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, in Christ are hidden. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It lies hidden in Christ. There was something that was hid for us to experience. So if you can understand what it means by Christ being in you and make it a pursuit, 
to explore it. How do you explore it? Oh, Jesus. First John, chapter 1. Thank you, Father. From verse 1. It says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which, have, <laughs> which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of what? Concerning the message of life. Or concerning the expression of life. The word there, <laughs> I don't, but the Greek word is logos. Concerning the expression of life. You see, when you talk about logos, we refer it to as word, right? It is what expresses the thoughts and the imaginations and the intents of people. Words. 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 So when Christ was being referred to as the word of God, it's saying that Christ is the expression of God. You see it clearly in Hebrews chapter 1. He says that he is the express image of God. The very exact net of God. So what he's saying is that if he says God, look at the word God is represented in Jesus. If you've seen Jesus, you should understand the word God. That's what he means. Not that Jesus, okay, let me not go there today. When you see Jesus, you are seeing the expression of God. He's the image of God. He's the expression of God. He carries the very nature of God. He was with God. He was one with him. He has life. And he was revealed. So the John 10 that we were looking at, he said, how come that I said that I am one with God and you say I am blaspheming? If you want to see God, see me. So John 14. Thomas was like, oh, show us the Father and it will be okay. He said, have you seen me and you've not seen the Father? Ah, I, am, I am the expression of the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Are you, are you following me? So it says concerning the word of life, the expression of life. Life, which is God. It says, <laughs> the life was manifested. <laughs> you, you get it? The life was manifested. It was revealed. It was shown. It appeared. The life was manifested. It appeared. It showed. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that what? That what? Eternal life. John 3, 16. Should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. It's a, it's, it's a personality. It's not to die and go to heaven. It's to be brought into a nature. Into a being. He said, and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may also have fellowship with us. That you may also share in this thing with us. Fellowship. Have this friendly association. This comradeship. You may have this with us. And then he went to emphasize what really it is. And he says, truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Our fellowship, our comradeship, 
our companionship, our friendly association is with the Father and with his son. Let me, let me, let me, let me explain to you. When you are in fellowship with somebody, it's, it's a love life. It's a, an affectionate likeness. You like the person. You love the person. You are fellowshipping with the person. You know what happens? You treat the person like you would treat yourself. Are you following me? You don't keep secrets between the two of you. Something happens, you open up, you call. Even the things that you think are shameful, the one that you have that fellowship with, that friendly association with, you open up to them. So, uh, is it Bob Marley that says, show me your friend, I'll show you. <laughs> uh, the people that we used to do reggae in the past. Oh, help me. Which of them? Was it Bob Marley or Culture? Normally, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. You let's leave that one. <laughs> but what it means is that he said only your friend can know your secrets. So only him can reward, reveal it. Who the cup fits? But Mali, aha, uh -huh, now you are here. Okay. So what it means is that. Somebody that you have a friendly disposition to, you don't hide things from him or her. You open up, you relate, you confer, you, you, you take decisions by engaging each other. So he's saying that our fellowship is with the Father and with Jesus Christ. Our fellowship, when we are one with him, when we have Christ in us, we have been brought into a place where we can fellowship with the Father and with the Son. What it means is that whatever the Father is and has and is available, he makes available to you also. If you can grow that fellowship. Are you following me? If you can grow that fellowship, he makes available to you. That is why Jesus was defining eternal life in John chapter 17, verse 3. And he says eternal life is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ. It's to know. It's to come to the knowledge of these people. You have fellowship. You have an association. So if Christ is in you, you have life. Now your work is to make sure that you can give yourself to fellowship. Your prayer life. Your fastings, your work study is one that should build fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. Enhance your relationship with the Father and with the Son. So you see, if I stand to do the work of God, which I am privileged to because I am one with him or I have life. Jesus said that you can do nothing of yourself. John 15. John 15. Now I'm talking. Uh, you, you can get it. You can get it. John 15. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You can't produce on yourself until you are connected. So let me be in you, Christ in you. Let me be in you. And if I am in you, and you are in me, which is oneness, which is the whole mystery of Having life. He said, when you have life, you will ask whatever you want and it will be given unto you. Why? Because life brings you into the fellowship, the class of relationship with the Father and with the Son. So you don't do things outside that class. You will not be, go, you will not be asking Toffee. <laughs> oh, give me Toffee, give me Toffee. Your, your perception of things will change. Your, your way you see life will elevate. So you come into that class and your action will be out of fellowship. 
Like Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I see my father do, I do likewise. Your acting will become out of fellowship. It's, it's a relationship thing. So you are not trying to show somebody that you have power. No, no, no. You are trying to display what your father and the Lord Jesus are making available. You walk your life. Beloved, this morning, I just came to announce this clearly to you. That what Jesus came to do was to make it possible that you and I can function in his class. We can function in his what? Class. Look, it's not blasphemy when you come to a place that you say, if you've seen Jesus, you want to see Jesus, you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you want to see Jesus? Why? You've seen me, you've seen Jesus. Because I'm living life. I am manifesting life. Like, like, like John said, the life was manifested. If you are able to manifest life, which now you have, it's your spirit nature, you have, then when you appear, he's appeared. That's why Jesus said that, ah, you want to see the Father? I am here with you and you want the Father. I have life. I have life. I am manifesting life. I don't do these things of myself. So he went further to say that the words I speak are not my words. They are the words of the Father. So I am just representing the Father. And the Father with me, he doeth the works. We have the privilege to walk on earth just like God, which is his intention from the beginning. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness that he might dominate on earth. That is his intention. And Jesus was the image of God. He's the true image of God. The first image to appear on earth. The true likeness of God to ever appear on earth, Jesus, not Adam. And he has given us the right to be also born of God and have that fellowship with him. I will give up anything to make my pursuit of fellowship stronger. I will give up anything. (laughs) I will give up anything. There are certain things I can't tell you now. Before he gave a go-ahead for this work to start, the dealings, I can't tell you for now. One time, as we grow, we'll get there. I'll give up anything. (laughs) When he appeared to me by prophecy through the prophet Kenneth Copeland and spoke awesome things. And I took one month to fast to wait on that prophecy to ask, what exactly are you trying to say? And he said, ministry. And I asked him, do you want me to go like the way give myself holy He said, no, go like how Paul did in Thessalonians. Work and do this. I said, okay. Paul was a tent maker and was preaching. Okay. I said, okay. And when we started, I started asking him, so when will I go fully? And he gave me a sign. nothing, Nothing can hold me. I would prefer to chew Gary pursuing this and grow in it than eat the sumptuous foods that you can find in the best of restaurants. I prefer. I prefer. I prefer. Uh, Maybe somebody might be saying, oh, you don't have, that is why. Ask my wife. When we went to Dubai, 
Which restaurant did we eat at? What you see in pictures? That's the restaurant we have access to. There were people in Dubai that when we, I, I made the booking crowd, they were wondering, hey, we are here, we don't enter here, you have come, you are entering there. So I'm not saying because I'm luck, I'm in luck. I'm not saying because I'm in luck. I'm saying because I can give up anything just to pursue this one. Because I can't be privileged to walk as an image of God and go scratching for what to eat today in the name of I also want to be some. What some? So this morning I brought you fire. To know that the issue about being born again and giving your life to Christ and all that we church is about coming into the very nature of God. To live here on earth like God. Expressing, expressing his kind of life. Is it available to everybody? Yes. He said, whosoever believes. Is that not it? Whosoever what? So it's available to whosoever if you are part of Whosoever. He didn't say it's available to only some people. So, no, uh, I can't be if, if I was, hey, uh, do you know where I was, uh, uh, my parents come from? Do you know, where, uh, hey, I can't, be? no, no, no. He said whosoever. Yours is to care to believe that it is possible. And give yourself to it. And then you will encounter the truth. You will encounter the nature. And the nature will make you live in the existence, the freedom of it. Be on your feet with me. I need some, I want to sing some song. Eh? I don't know if you people can. Father, wrap me in your hands. Father, wrap me in your hands. And Father me. It's a simple song. It's a simple song. And I want you to join me sing that song this morning. Father, wrap me in your hands. Father, wrap me in your hands. And Father me. It's a simple one. Maybe I'm not giving the tune. I'm giving the tune according to some order. Uh, you can change it. I don't mind. Please let's make it quick. And please let's all join in. It's a simple song. Father, wrap me in your hands. Father, wrap me in your hands and father me. That's all. Wrap me in your hands and father me. Wrap me in your hands and what? Father me. Near me. And father me. Oh, don't we have Bacchus? Bacchus, come and back the song. Don't worry. Father, you can go any frequency. We me. don't have your oh. and father me okay can we all join in the singing please bring everybody into it father wrap me in your hands father wrap me in your hands father Father, wrap me in your hands and father me. In somebody's heart, panting oh, after God. Father, wrap me
One more time, somebody sing it, sing it with me. Father, wrap, Father, wrap me in your hands. Sing it, sing it. Father, wrap me in your hands. Sing it. Father, wrap me in your hands. commission you to be bearers of peace. I commission you to be bearers of peace. I commission you to be bearers of peace. Live here in the peace that my Lord Jesus Christ gives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let's see you in the evening at 6. 6 p.m. for healing service. And then we'll minister as he enables us 6 p.m. this evening healing service don't miss it it will be a sharp one god bless you and listen to the message god bless you see you in the evening at six